Good morning, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. Uh, the other day, I started a little deal on uh, on converting a um, a natural gas burning uh, barbecue pit over to LP gas. Um, we come across one from a brother-in-law that moved up to Boston here a while back uh, that was fired on natural gas. And we made a a deal for it, you know, for my my daughter and son-in-law. Uh, but of course, we live it out the country and. Uh, everything's propane out here. Well, you know, it's brand new. I mean, it's only a couple years old. What the heck? So we figured, well, we'll go ahead and call manufacturer, get a propane kit or LP kit for it. And uh, lo and behold, you know, typical of uh, a lot of things these days, manufacturer says there's nothing available. And so I got on the website, started looking around. Heck, I couldn't find anything at all for him. Well, you know, I'm an old air conditioner man and I've uh, been doing it for 40 some years, you know, but uh, uh, that's not going to stop us. We're going to figure out what the heck we got to do, you know. So uh, the other day, I, I started a little series or a little video, uh, several segments, I guess, of dismantling this thing and getting the orifices all out, you know, and, and uh, preparing how to, um, you know, to drill, uh, solder them and, and redrill them and all that stuff. And in my, in my bid for video excellence, lo and behold, uh, in my editing procedure, I lost the first segment of all the videos, which is what I'm trying to duplicate here, which probably ain't going to be nothing like what I had to begin with. Because I can't remember what the heck I said, you know. <laughs> but to make a long story short, it essentially covered, you know, um, how to dismantle the burners. You can see the burners are all dismantled inside here, and it also showed how you get up underneath where the where the uh, where the control valves are, and there's little there's little um, uh, brass uh, fittings on the back of those uh, those control valves, you know, that house the 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 nozzle or the orifice, so to speak. And I showed how to draw those out of there, and and uh, and how to be careful, you know, of your igniters and all that. And make sure you don't do any damage. But uh, then I went about the business of making the rest of the subsequent videos on how you prepare them for soldering them shut and, and all that. And that, that will be to follow. But at any rate, I couldn't hardly start the remaining portion of the videos without this, this, uh, this lead-in, so to speak, which is why I'm trying to attempt to, uh, to redo what the heck I lost. Now, I, I tell you, old Grizz just said on one of my videos a little while ago that video, uh, video editing is somewhat overrated. He said, heck with the editing. And you know what, Grizz, I think I, I have a tendency to agree with you because me and that editing software, we just ain't, we just ain't working out real good. So, uh, but at any rate, for what it's worth, that's what I had in the first uh, part of the video is how to dismantle, how to get these uh, orifices out, and how to prepare them, you know, get ready to, to correct them. So at any rate, hopefully uh, this will turn out to make a halfway decent bit of sense. Uh, maybe it won't, don't know. But at any rate, for now, this Tractor Man 44, and I'm out of here. Here, I'm back again. I got those uh, orifices removed. Um, got a couple of drill bits laying out here too, but first off, before we go too much farther, take a look at this here. This is a set of, of uh, specifically orifice drill bits. These are numbered bits, and they range from size 79, which is really fairly large. It's really close to 3 sixteenths, um, all the way to number 60, which is, is fairly small. Um, and this is for drilling um, uh, larger capacity uh, orifices in larger residential furnaces and commercial commercial rooftop equipment. I did not uh, service appliances, uh, never serviced appliances hardly at all in my life. I had to because I, occasionally because I had to, but but very, very, very seldom. But at any rate, once you get to, um, I'd be, I worked on all the larger equipment. But at any rate, uh, once you get to, to number 60, uh, if you require a size that's a little bit smaller than that, you go over to your next drill index, and you can see this guy here is about the size of a matchbook, and it's got, oh, I don't know, 20, 20, I guess, in here, 20 uh, drills. And it goes from number 61. It picks up uh, where the little one on this kit picks off, pick, uh, takes off. The, 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 the biggest one in here uh, is smaller than the, the, uh, the, the smallest one there. But anyway, it goes from number 61 all the way to number 80. So you can actually see by the time it gets down to number 80 in size, which, by the way, is 0.013, so... 13 thousandths uh, of an inch diameter uh, it's 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 pretty difficult to use but at any rate those that's whenever these pin vices come into play you go ahead and chuck this take that drill bit and you chuck it into this pin vise if you can focus on that you can see that it actually opens and closes not unlike a uh, a chuck on a drill or on a drill press and then 
on these tiny ones, you go ahead and re-drill just by holding it in the center of the orifice, and then you just move it back and forth and just slowly remove a little bit of the material needed in order to, uh, to drill that orifice to size. Like I said, these are some of those tools I talked about in earlier videos that you probably are not going to have access to, but uh, unfortunately I do, and, and I did, and I've used them many, many times over the, over the last four decades. But at any rate, uh, to kind of give you something, another, another thing to look at, these right here, this is a pack, this is all I have left of, uh, of probably a pack of 50 or 100, you know, I don't know, I've, I've bought a number of packs of them over the years, but these are spuds, okay, you can see there's absolutely no opening in them whatsoever, and I do not remember the size of the drill bit that we would have to drill, but we would take the, uh, the, the larger units, uh, orifice, and we would drill those units, uh, or those orifices, and then we would pop these guys into those uh, into those orifices, and then we would insert the appropriate size drill bit down through the center of this, and we would re-drill the orifice, and everything's done. Uh, this is a uh, a press fit. Um, you know, you, you you drill that that hole nominally the same size as this, just snug enough to where you physically have to tap it in place with a hammer, and uh, and that's it. That that's all there are to it. Um, like I say, I've used dozens of them over the years, and I'm down to just my last few, and obviously you do not use them on these tiny of orifices here. You can see how small these guys are. But anyway, back to these number drills. Uh, the two that I've got pulled out happen to be the ones that go to these, uh, to these uh, orifices, and that's what you... Uh, you don't have any nomenclature, any information on the uh, appliance typically to tell you what the BTUs of the individual burners are. Now on, on ranges, residential ranges and, and things like that, they typically have a, a list of what the BTU capacity is of the individual burners and also your broil uh, burner and also your oven uh, burner. It tells you what that BTU capacity is. With that information, you can go to the chart and determine the orifice size needed to convert to gases. But in this case here, I don't have that information, don't have the chart, couldn't find it on the website. So we're using the drill bits as a sizing apparatus. And uh, we found out that uh, number 53 is the one for that sear, that sear uh, uh, element. So at any rate, if it is a number 53 orifice in natural gas, that tells us that that burner is capable of producing 9,510 BTUs at 3.5 inches of water column. So what we do is we take that information, that 9,510, and we transfer over to the LP gas pressure uh, water column. And we can see that the very closest one we have to that is 9,570 BTU. So we're going to adjust that orifice size from number 53 to a much smaller size of number 63. And conversely, we do exactly the same thing with the three orifices that have the uh, number 55 bit. Number 55 at three and a half inches water column produces 7,240 BTUs. So we're gonna look for the closest in capacity to 7,240. This one in particular is 7,150. Okay, so we're going to adjust that orifice size to a drill bit number 67. So we're getting pretty small. Uh, but again, that it doesn't take much because of the difference in gas pressure between LP at 11 inches of water column and three and a half inches of natural gas. But at any rate, um, what we're going to do now is we got to clean these things up. Uh, by clean them up, I mean for whatever reason they're they're painted black. They are solid brass, which is really good. Uh, all the orifices typically are. I mean, very seldom do you ever run into a steel orifice. Uh, I don't recall ever having found anything other than brass. Um, but at any rate, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and clean these up. you got to get all that paint and everything off there because we're going to drop just a tiny bit of 8% of, uh, silver solder down inside this opening and we're going to plug that opening. Uh, now that actual orifice is probably an eighth of an inch in length, the actual drill portion of it. So we have to shine that up to where that, that, that silver solder will actually adhere to that brass. Uh, so we have to use a, a particular flux, an oxygen, oxygen acetylene torch. We're going to drop that little drip in there, and we're going to uh, go about the business of adjusting that orifice to the proper size to, uh, to where we're going to get the same BTU right out of those same burners with a different gas. Okay, it's going to take me a little while to set that up and, and get ready to do that, so I will be right back. One thing I forgot to clarify is uh, the, the sizes for the LP um, 
were actually number 63 and number 67. Uh, there was three of them that was going to be 67. Then the sear burner is uh, several sizes larger at the 63. So that gives you a rough idea. You remember the physical size of those uh, larger orifices. Um, whenever we checked to see what the bore was, so we could figure out what the BTU capacity of the burners were. Uh, that was for the natural gas. LP, like I said, is three times or more, approximately three times higher pressure, uh, resulting in a much smaller orifice for the same uh, BTU capacity. I forgot to clarify that before, so that's why I'm using the pin vise and, uh, and, and all that in the drill press. Just a little addition there, an addendum, I guess. Tractor Man 44, out again. Now, I know I said earlier I was going to use a oxyacetylene torch. I kind of spoke out of turn. Um, you know, it's kind of hard making this up as you go along, you know, as far as uh, what you're going to say. Uh, but at any rate, actually what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a Presolite torch, uh, just plain acetylene, acetylene only. Uh, they typically call it a Presolite torch. Uh, this particular one is a self-igniting. Uh, but at any rate, we uh, got the orifices all cleaned out. So I got one chucked up in the drill or in the vise right here. And I got the uh, silver bearing solder ready and I got the uh, flux right there. So we're gonna see what happens here. Uh, the trick is you gotta have just enough heat to melt everything, but not so much that you uh, completely flood everything with, uh, with silver or silver solder. That's that self-igniting, it's a little bit loud. I'm gonna turn the regulator down just a little. don't need quite that much heat. But at any rate, uh, the camera's actually in my way a little bit. I'd really like to be working this just a little bit differently. But I've taken a little flux, put some flux down inside the opening uh, to let the solder kind of, and then I've got a little flux on the tip of my, uh, my solder. So we're just gonna wave that on there. See if I can get just a little dribble of solder down in there. And I got a little more than a dribble. That's gonna be a little bit of a problem but not too much, because I'm going to have to uh, drill that out. It's not a big deal. That'll be a one-eighth of an inch. You can look down at the bottom. And it did. It came completely full. It filled the entire cavity, uh, so it good, should be nice and secure. So what I'm going to do then is uh, take this and chuck it back up in the drill press once it cools down. I'll redrill that center one eighth of an inch till it gets down to the uh, where the actual orifice penetrates, and by doing that, that's going to give me the uh, the taper with that eighth inch drill bit to center up that orifice drill, so that I put the orifice drill dead center through uh, through the center of this uh, orifice. That way, as the gas passes through um, uh, the orifice and into the venturi of the burner, it hits the venturi of the, venturi of the burner dead center, and it won't go off to the side or go off at an angle and kind of uh, mess up the flow, so to speak, the mixture of the, uh, the air and the gas. So at any rate, I'm going to turn the camera off, and I'm going to go ahead and solder up the other, uh, the other remaining ones. And uh, by that time, this one here will be cool. I'll, well, actually, I'll wait till they all get cool. And I'll go back in the, uh, uh, the drill press there, and I'll go ahead and uh, re-drill these son of a guns to the right size. So, uh, and in the meantime, my camera died, so I'm on the iPhone now, so I don't know if I'm going to have uh, more of a trouble or not trying to... <laughs> M meld these two different uh, uh, filming devices together or not. Just don't know yet. Anyway, again, Tractor Man 44, out of here for now.